Hi, welcome to the Convert Group video on managing storage with Convert Enterprise. This video assumes the viewer has a working knowledge of Convert. If not, before continuing, you may find it useful to watch the video titled Convert Enterprise Feature Highlights. You may also want to watch its companion video, Convert Enterprise Cloud Feature Highlights. In this video, we will discuss a different storage option supported by Convert for virtualized and cloud infrastructures. We will focus on how to set up common storage solutions such as NFS, iSCSI, and Fiber Channel. We will also talk about how to set up and utilize Fiber Channel and Internet SCSI and multipath configurations. We will also touch on Amazon's EBS or Elastic Block Store, which is available with Convert Enterprise Cloud. Now, let's open Convert and set up some storage. In Convert, storage is defined by selecting the Manage Storage option. You can access the Manage Storage feature from two places. One, the action bar, or two, a pop-up menu available in the navigation pane. Both options are context sensitive. So first, go to the navigation pane and select the data center in the hierarchy. All storage is defined in the data center and then assigned to specific server pools. If you select manage storage when a server pool or server is selected, you will be able to attach or edit predefined storage, but you will not be able to create new storage. After selecting data center in the navigation pane, Choose the Manage Storage option from the action bar. A dialog box will appear, which is used to define and configure storage. The first step is to press New to create new storage. Then we choose the type of storage that we want to create. The most common types of storage in use by Convert Enterprise customers are NFS, iSCSI, and Fiber Channel. In this video, we'll show setting up both file-based, as used in network-attached storage, and block-based, as in storage area network topology. Let's start with NFS. Next, we need to provide a name for the storage entity. This name will appear in the Convert interface, so the name should be user-readable and allow quick identification. Many IT organizations have naming conventions that indicate location, storage type, storage size, business owner, or other important characteristics of the storage. Today, I'm going to give a simple name like Demo, Store, Demo NFS. Next, we need to provide a description. This field is optional, but can be very useful, especially in scenarios where there are encoded naming conventions. Exploding the shorthand can be helpful for new users to learn and adapt naming conventions. I'm going to give a very short description here so that we can move to the next stage. The next several fields identify the storage as it exists in your infrastructure. The server, share, and mount point information is often provided by a network or storage administrator. The server field identifies the path to the storage. This must be a valid network path that resolves the storage of the type identified in the first step. In our demonstration, our server is a simple IP address. And the share field identifies the export point on that server, which in our case is slash mnt slash lab underscore storage slash share. The mount point defines how the network share will be addressed in convert. We're going to use slash mnt slash vm underscore store. That's all we need to do to define the storage. An optional but very wise step is to validate that the storage configuration information we just entered is accurate. To do that, Select one of your managed servers from the drop-down list and press the scan button. This will temporarily mount the storage just defined to ensure that the entries are valid and appropriate permissions exist. When successful, Convert will display the contents of the newly defined storage. If unsuccessful, it's time to contact your network or storage administrator. The last step in setting up storage is to identify which server pools will have access to this storage. So click on the server pools tab and choose which server pools you would like to have access to the storage. I'm gonna choose desktops and QA labs. Then of course, press save. Convert will initiate a task to add the storage. 
When that task is completed, the Manage Storage dialog box will be updated with a new storage and an icon showing the current status. In this case, our storage has been added successfully and is online as identified by the green icon. Now that we've completed creating NFS storage, let's go ahead and close the dialog box. Adding other storage follows a similar process. Let's take a quick look at adding SCSI storage. After selecting Data Center in the navigation pane, choose the Manage Storage option from the pop-up menu. The same dialog box we just used to configure NFS storage appears. Again, the first step is to choose New and select the type of storage that we want from the drop-down menu. We're going to set up iSCSI. So I'll choose that and then I'll provide a name following the naming conventions that we did previously. I'll also give a short description of iSCSI disk, iSCSI storage for demo. You'll notice that the next three fields are different than when we set up NFS. That's because iSCSI has different configuration parameters. These parameters are usually provided by a network administrator or storage administrator. The portal defines the path to the storage. For those unfamiliar with iSCSI, this is like an NFS server. My system administrator told me that my portal is 192.168.12.150. And he gave me a very complex target name, which I'll just paste in here. The next two fields are authentication credentials. iSCSI uses CHAP, or the Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. But for the purposes of our demo, these fields may be empty, and that's what we're going to do. Those of you who are familiar with iSCSI may be wondering about iSCSI initiators. Convert will automatically create the necessary iSCSI initiators so there are no more configuration steps. We'll follow the same procedure that we did with NFS and validate our storage by selecting a server from the drop-down list and then hitting the scan button, which will then go ahead and attempt to mount the storage and let us know if our configuration parameters are valid and accurate. If the test is successful, which this one was, Convert will show us the contents of the storage that we've just added. Following the same steps we do with NFS, we'll now select which server pools will be able to use the storage that we've just defined. In this case, I'll choose desktops and servers and save that change. Convert will initiate a task to add that new storage, and when that task is completed, the Manage Storage dialog will be updated with the new storage and an icon showing its current status. In this case, again, our storage has been added successfully and is online as identified by the green icon. Now that we're getting good at this, let's try once more with Fiber Channel. We'll follow the same steps, choosing Manage Storage from the Data Center, and then we'll go ahead and fill in the fields. After selecting New, we choose Fiber Channel from the dropdown. We give our storage a name, which in this case will be the Demo Fiber Channel Storage Area Network. A description is the Demo Fiber Channel Storage Area Network. Again, we'll see that the configuration fields have changed based on the fact that Fiber Channel has different configuration parameters than either NFS or iSCSI. I got the parameters from my storage administrator who told me to use a host adapter 9, a bus channel of 0, and a target of 0. Like we did with NFS and iSCSI, we'll now validate the storage by choosing a, a server to test from and then pressing the scan button. And we'll initiate the same process that we've seen now twice before. And when successful, show us the contents of the storage that we've just added. Now we'll go to the server pools and define which server pools will have access to the storage and press save. Convert will kick off a task to mount storage, and when complete, the storage will show up in the data center dropdown. The last two storage types we set up, iSCSI and Fiber Channel, are commonly used in a high availability configuration known as multipath. While multipath configurations have additional administrative complexity outside of Convert, multipath is transparent inside Convert. After your network or storage administrator has used the Linux device mapper to set up a multipath configuration, storage is added exactly as we've just done. Finally, let's talk about popular cloud storage options such as Amazon's EBS or Elastic Block Store. EBS support is available only in Convert Enterprise Cloud. 
The navigation pane in Convert Enterprise Cloud includes two nodes that don't exist in Convert Enterprise, IAAS and Virtual Data Center. Users may add, utilize, and monitor EBS through these nodes. The process is quite similar to what we have just demonstrated. And so far, we focused on configuring storage to be used by virtual machines. But the question remains, how do you actually utilize the storage for a VM? Let's provision a VM in C. I'm going to start with the server in my desktop server pool. I select that server pool. I choose one of the servers in that server pool. I right click and I select provision virtual machine from the menu. Since this video is about storage, we'll skip the detailed explanation of the provisioning features, but look for a future video on that topic. On this screen though, there are two important things to notice. One is that the VM name is required. So I'm going to follow my demo convention and name it my demo VM. A second thing that's important to notice here is that this VM is based off a template called CentOS PV install. When I go to the storage option, if the person who created the template created default storage for that template, it will appear in this list. Since we just created new storage, we don't want to use the default storage. We would like to set this virtual machine up on the storage that we just used. So to do that, we're going to choose new. The template has many of the defaults filled in, including again, the default location, which is provided by the template. We're going to change that to use the storage that we just defined. When I click on the name dropdown, you'll see the storage that we just created. I'm going to use the NFS storage option. Say OK. There is one more required field, which I will fill in, and then I will save the changes that we made. And our VM will be provisioned using the new storage. When the provisioning task has been completed, my demo VM automatically appears in the navigation pane. Let's recap what we just covered. With Convert, there are three basic steps to setting up and using storage. The first step is to define storage using the Manage Storage facility in Convert. The second step is to make storage available by assigning it to server pools. And the third step is to attach that storage to your VMs. In today's video, we talked about the many different types of storage that are supported by Convert. We focused on three common solutions, NFS, iSCSI, and Fiverr Channel. We demonstrated how to configure those storage options, including how to configure with Multipath for both iSCSI and Fiber Channel. We also talked briefly about Amazon EBS and its use with Convert Enterprise Cloud. We demonstrated the easy to use interface for managing storage and how to configure VMs to utilize that storage. And that concludes this video on managing storage with Convert Enterprise. Thank you, and we'll talk to you again soon.